Welcome to What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. In partnership with Friends of Latin America, Massachusetts Peace Action, and Task Force on the Americas, we broadcast every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Code Pink YouTube Live. Today, we bring you a special broadcast from Santo Tomas in uh, Chantales, this uh, departamento, Chantales, uh, Nicaragua. And um, we're broadcasting today with our guest partners, friends of the ATC Nicaragua, and I'm happy to be back here in Santo Tomas with my friends Erica Tequeo, a friend of the ATC, and our friend from Venezuela, Carlos Rivera Valera. And we are at um, what Friends of the ATC calls an Ayala. And we're going to talk to you about what this uh, project is. And I also just want to let all of you know that this is a very personal uh, story for all three of us. We did a, uh, well, I met Carlos last year, April, um, through Erica. Um, Erica and I had a delegation here in March, March of 2021, about 12 days where we traveled across Nicaragua, Managua, Esteli, Bilwi, uh, Corn Island, we saw a wide variety of Nicaragua and we were principally here to study uh, what a sanctioned regime looks like, what a U.S. imposed sanctioned regime looks like on a country. And after the delegation, uh, Erica brought me here to Santo Domingo where I met Carlos and um, this Iyala has gone under an enormous transformation in the last 12 months and so I really want to share this story with you. There's a couple projects that have happened at this school in the last 12 months. One specifically was the result of our anti-sanctions delegation last March. Yes to sovereignty, no to sanctions, I think is what we themed the trip. And one of the projects that came out of that trip was a, um, what do you call it, a big, uh, not an, a cistern, I guess, or a water tank. tank. A water tank. And this came about specifically because of the delegation, and this was one of the days where I actually liked being on Facebook. We were over on the Caribbean coast, we were going down the river to the mouth of the Caribbean, to a community called Wawa Bar, which was destroyed by um, hurricanes Eta and Iota in November of 2020. And um, we were posting pictures because the government has helped that community rebuild very, very quickly. And nothing compared to what New Orleans still looks like in the United States. So one of our very generous friends um, living in San Francisco, Porfirio Quintano and, and his wife Marlene, Marlene saw uh, some of the photos from um, that particular day of the trip. And they had put together um, a hurricane relief fund for Central America, they being Hondurans. And they had identified projects in Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, and they were looking for a project in Nicaragua. They saw photos of us in Wawa Bar and graciously and generously offered um, funds uh, for Nicaragua. So part of those funds came here to where we're at today and I just really want all of you to know this is a really wonderful and very personal experience for all three of us. So I guess Erica, I will um, introduce you to the audience. Erica runs Friends of the ATC um, out of Managua, Nicaragua. Delegations, educational classes, and she's from the United States, Portland, Oregon, and has been living here for how long have you been here? Five years. Five years, I wanted mm -hmm. to say, you know, it seems like you've been here forever because you're so good at what you do. <laughs> and everybody knows you and loves you. So, so why don't you tell us about yourself a little bit and also um, friend, uh, give us a quick one rundown on Friends of the ATC. Sure. So, uh, Terry introduced myself. Um, Erica Takeo, uh, North American with uh, also family from Japan. Grew up in Portland, Oregon and have been based here in Nicaragua since 2017, working within the International Relations Secretariat of the Asociación de Trabajadores del Campo, which is an organization, a historic organization in Nicaragua that represents farm workers as well as small farmers. Born in the 
1970s in the context of the final insurrection before the triumph of the Sandinista Popular Revolution and has since continued to organize through a lot of different historical moments here in Nicaragua. Um, so I work within the international relations team and one of the tasks that I have that I really love is coordinating the Friends of the ATC Solidarity Network, which is a network of people from all walks of life, but uh, we especially have a lot of North Americans and a lot of young North Americans who are interested in learning more about the ATC, about Nicaragua, about the Sandinista Revolution, and so we organize a lot of activities, exchanges, do communications work, and other kinds of campaigns to share the experience of the ATC. Um, one thing that's also important to note, because we're here in Iala, and I'm sure Carlos will explain as well, is that the ATC in the early 1990s was a founding organization that helped to create, uh, at the continental level, the Latin American Coordination of Rural Organizations, or CLOC, uh, for its uh, acronym in Spanish as well as internationally, La Via Campesina, which is a very well-known international social movement that coined the term food sovereignty. And um, La Via Campesina is the social movement that got together um, along with uh, the government of Hugo Chavez um, in the early 2000s to found the first IALA, and since then we've been founding uh, other IALA. So Friends of the ATC as a solidarity network also organizes a lot of activities related to La Via Campesina and to IALA. And, and tell our audience what, what is an IALA. Yes, IALA, I-A-L-A, -A, for its acronym, stands for Instituto Agroecológico Latinoamericano, or in English, Latin American Institute of Agroecology. And there's nine throughout? Yeah, America, there, are, there are currently nine schools throughout the continent. One uh, however, here. <laughs> one here, it's one of the new, most, uh, it's one of the newer IALAs. Um, and there are also, we have, yeah, the first IALA was in Venezuela. Mm. We have Vialas in Chile, Argentina, two in Brazil, um, let's see, Colombia, Paraguay, uh, there's a related outreach called Disco in Cuba, and there are a few emerging Vialas in Mexico oh, and the yeah. Dominican Republic. Yeah, oh, and how exciting. Yes. So before I, I introduce Carlos to all of you, I, I want to just make a special point. Erica has said she's from North America, as am I, and I think this is something that we really, really need to um, accentuate. And because here we are, Erica and I both being from the United States, which is part of North America, we are sitting in Central America, in Nicaragua, and Carlos is Venezolano, and he is from South America. So we are all from America. Both just America. North, Central, South America, and I just think that's really important for us to keep reinforcing that <laughs> with, with the North American audience, that the United States alone is not America. The United States is one country in North America, and again, we're sitting in Central America, and we're representing the United States and Venezuela, which is South America. So this is kind of fun that <laughs> we have a good part of the hemisphere represented in this episode. So sitting next to me is our good friend, our good Venezuelan friend, Carlos Rodriguez Valera. And he's the principal educator and manager of the Ayala that we are at here in Santo Domingo. And so we are going to have Carlos speak with you in Spanish. Eric is going to translate. Um, and so Carlos, díganos un cuento sobre esta Ayala y su historia también. Desde Venezuela primero. <laughs> sí. Mucho gusto. Eh, mi nombre es Carlos Rodríguez, eh, venezolano. Eh, yo vi, viví en la región llanera, en el estado de Portuguesa, y hoy estoy acá en Nicaragua. Pero en, todavía mientras estaba en Venezuela logré ser parte de la construcción del IALA Paulo Freire. El IALA Paulo Freire es el primer IALA en América Latina. Ese IALA eh, se, se, se creó a través de reuniones y reuniones de dirigentes y dirigentes de la Clovia Campesina que venían eh, en, ese, en, ese, en esa idea de construir un espacio donde hijos e hijas de campesinos y afrodescendientes tuvieran la oportunidad de estudiar en un, en un, en un espacio diferente a una universidad convencional. Um, so, nice to meet you all. My name is uh, Carlos. I'm from Venezuela. Um, I'm originally from the Llanera region, uh, the Portuguese state in, in Venezuela. 
um, where I had the opportunity to participate in the construction of the Iala, the Paolo Freire Iala, which is the first Iala that existed. And uh, this first Iala was created out of a series of meetings with social movement leaders from Colombia Campesina with the idea of building a school for sons and daughters of peasants and Afro-descendant peoples um, to study in a space that was different than a conventional university. Un espacio donde pudiésemos tener jóvenes que vengan con conocimientos ancestrales, conocimientos eh, de comunidades, con conocimientos de sus padres que han, que han sido campesinos durante toda la vida. Un espacio donde llegaran ellos a aportar esos conocimientos y no un espacio donde se llegara a castrar sus conocimientos de origen, sus conocimientos ancestrales. Esa, ese instituto era el que quería crear la vía campesina. Esa iniciativa de crear ese espacio fue, digamos, compartida con el presidente de Venezuela, Hugo Chávez, en su momento. Ok, so this space was meant to be a space for young people to come with the ancestral knowledge that they had, knowledge from the community, knowledge from their peasant parents, to be able to contribute knowledge rather than a place where their knowledge was uh, taken away from them. Um, it's a space that was first envisioned by La Villa Campesina, but it was also a shared vision with the president at that time, Hugo Chavez. En una reunión en Brasil, que, que la, la Villa Campesina logró interactuar con el presidente en ese momento de Venezuela, Hugo Chávez, ellos lograron presentar esa iniciativa y Chávez, al conocer esa iniciativa humanista, esa iniciativa política, esa iniciativa productiva, esa iniciativa ancestral con toda esa metodología que traía eh, la creación de este IALA que hoy en día es, es lo, los espacios de formación política más importantes, si queremos llamarlo, de la región, él conoce el proyecto e inmediatamente se le da oportunidad de crearlo y las mejores condiciones en ese momento era Venezuela. So there was a meeting that took place in Brazil where La Villa Campesina had the chance to speak to President Hugo Chávez and uh, Chávez uh, learning about this project that was uh, a humanist project, a political project, a project focused on food production as well as um, an ancestral project um, saw that it was uh, a very important, uh, perhaps the most important project for political and ideological training in the region and um, presented this opportunity to build the IALA in one of the most important places of the, in Venezuela. Es entonces en el 2005 cuando se le da paso a la creación de, de, de este Instituto Agroecológico Latinoamericano Paulo Freire donde hicimos, hicimos, hicieron llamados a diferentes jóvenes de América Latina. Tuvimos representantes de México hasta Panamá y de Colombia hasta Argentina. O sea, tuvimos delegados de todos los países de América Latina, teniendo como, como fruto o como cosecha eh, gra graduantes En número de 64, 64 personas fueron graduadas en ese, en ese IALA, Paulo Freire, nacido a través de la iniciativa de Campesina y apoyado por el comandante Hugo Chávez. So, in 2005 is when the IALA Paulo Freire was inaugurated and they uh, sent out uh, an opening for young people from Latin America all the way from Mexico to Panama, from Colombia to Argentina, all of the countries from Latin America were represented. And uh, the fruits or the harvest of um, Paulo Freire was the first graduating class of 64 students, which represents this uh, agreement historically between La Villa Campesina and President Hugo Chavez. Estar en el IALA me dio la oportunidad de conocer el proyecto, el proyecto IALA, el proyecto de los IALA, Y, y, y darme cuenta de que era una iniciativa muy positiva, muy, este, muy política, muy productiva para los espacios que la vía campesina y los movimientos sociales queremos fortalecer. Tener jóvenes que se formen en estos espacios nos permite avanzar en la agroecología, en el pensamiento ideológico, político, para la lucha de nuestros movimientos sociales en defensa de nuestros campesinos y campesinas. 
so uh, being there at the Yala gave, at the first Yala gave me a chance to get to know um, what is this project of all of the Yalas. And I saw that it was a very positive initiative. It was a very political initiative. It was a very productive initiative uh, born out of La Via Campesina and social movements, focusing on strengthening social movements, a place where youth can go and train in agroecology, in ideology, and uh, to strengthen the struggle in defense of our peasantry. Espacio donde venimos a descolonizar nuestro pensamiento, espacio donde venimos a formarnos, pero también a fortalecer ese conocimiento ancestral que traemos desde nuestros eh, lugares, desde nuestros orígenes. Eh, tener 64 graduando de, es, de ese instituto IALA, Pablo Freire, permitió que esos jóvenes se, se, se regresaran a sus países y empezaran a conformar más IALAs para la región de América Latina. Significó mucho porque ahora ya tenemos, como lo dijo la compañera, tenemos más de nueve yalas en América Latina y esas, esos nueve yalas son, eh, eh, digamos, manejados o conducidos por jóvenes que ya pasaron por estos procesos de formación en el Yala Pauro Freire. So, this was, uh, this is a space to decolonize our way of thinking, to train ourselves to strengthen ancestral knowledge that we already have. And the first uh, 64 graduates uh, that were part of that first graduating class, young people all returned to their home countries to share this experience of Iyala with others. So that's why, as Terry said, we now have uh, more than nine Iyalas throughout Latin America, and they're all coordinated by young people who graduated from Iyala Paulo Freire. Sí, no, y, y ahora estos nueve yalas siguen en la lucha, siguen en la formación. Para mencionar y citar algunos, tenemos el yala María Cano en Colombia, tenemos el yala guaraní en Paraguay, el yala de mujeres en Chile, las escuelas de agroecología de Cuba, los yalas que tenemos en Brasil, en Argentina, y nuestro yala, yala Ichimuleo eh, para la región mesoamericana, Ichimuleo en eh, eh, En idioma maya quiche significa tierra de maíz. Ya nos encontramos acá y nosotros nacemos en el 2018 y ya en el 2022 ya iniciamos con la tercera corte. Eso, eso fruto o esa iniciativa política de la vía campesina y acompañada de, de, de nuestro líder de América o, o de nuestro uno, uno de nuestros líderes de América, Hugo Chávez, hoy en día muestra que es la, la, una de las mejores escuelas para, para, para masificarla, para trabajar la agroecología y fortalecer el pensamiento ideológico. Ok. Um, so, there's now nine Iyalas that are all part of the struggle. We have the Iyala Maria Cano that's in Colombia, Iyala Guaraní that's in Paraguay, an Iyala for women in Chile. There's an agroecologist going to Cuba. And we also have Iyalas in Brazil as well as Argentina. And then we have our Iala, which is called Iala Ichimuleo here in Mesoamerica. Ichimuleo means land of corn in uh, Maya Quiche. And uh, that's where we are right now. This Iala was born in 2018. And now in 2022, we're about to start our third cohort of students. And these all re represent the fruits of uh, La Via Campesina, of course, accompanied by important leaders like Hugo Chavez. And it shows, and now we can show that we are uh, one of the most important schools in the region for massifying agroecology and also for uh, promoting uh, ideolo I ideology. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Well, I th because there's a couple things when we were, when Carlos was giving me uh, an updated tour of, of the Ayala today, and there's so much that has happened since we toured a year ago, April. One of the things that I was able to witness today is there is a class in session now um, with 18 women attending and women from Dominican Republic, from Mexico, Panama, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, seven countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this was really uh, really wonderful to sit in on one of their classes earlier today and see just the, the, the training and education of women, their desire to be here, 
and work in this particular space and um, and just the empowerment of women throughout Central and South America and, and the Caribbean mm -hmm. so it's really uh, very inspiring to be here and also when um, when we were touring some of the, the crops Carlos mentioned the term milpa and so I wonder if he could okay because that is also something we're going to be studying in Honduras next week. Okay. So I kind of gave it away what we're going to do next week. <laughs> sí. <but. laughs> sí, pero eh, está mencionando que fue hoy en el recorrido, que aprendió bastante, vio los cambios de su visita anterior y eh, tuvo la oportunidad de ver la, que ahorita hay un curso de 18 mujeres de 7 países, República Dominicana, México, Panamá, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, que es algo muy interesante la formación de mujeres, su interés en estar aquí y el tema de empoderamiento de la mujer en Centroamérica, Sudamérica y Caribe, si podrías comentar algo. Y en el recorrido eh, este, mencionaste el concepto de la milpa, Entonces, si ¿sí podrías explicar un poco qué es MILPA, porque van a Honduras en la próxima semana y también van a estar hablando sobre MILPA. Sí, bueno, para nosotros, eh, en este espacio, en este espacio físico de, del Instituto Agroecológico y a la Ichimuleo, es, digamos, como oportuno tener visitas y tener... Eh, con, tener secuencia de, lo, de los encuentros de formación en este espacio. Nos encontramos acá en la segunda escuela de, de mujeres agroecólogas de Mesoamérica y el Caribe, donde estamos compartiendo, debatiendo experiencias de sus lugares de orígenes, por ejemplo, experiencias muy ricas y muy este, eh, productivas de las compañeras de Guatemala, todo lo que se desarrolla a nivel organizativo, a nivel, a nivel productivo, eh, con las compañeras, las compañeras de México, la lucha que llevan los mexicanos, las mexicanas, con, con, con todos ese, 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 esos problemas que suceden ¿no? en, en, en los procesos. Igual, igual los, las compañeras de El Salvador, las compañeras de, de, de Honduras y las compañeras de, de, de Panamá. Experiencias muy ricas en este espacio porque también nosotros acá hemos desarrollado experiencias productivas, experiencias también políticas que podemos ir fortaleciendo. Nosotros hablamos de la educación popular, hablamos de, del conocimiento en construcción, no, no es yo que me lo sé todo, sino el debate acerca de los puntos estratégicos para el desarrollo de, de, de estos procesos es en colectivo, es poner un punto y entrar en debate a través de los diferentes tipos de, 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 de pensamiento o posición de las compañeras que, que, que nos visitan. Entonces, eso es lo que nosotros queremos enriquecer, enriquecer los conocimientos y entregar herramientas nuevas a las compañeras o compañeros para que sigamos emprendiendo la lucha y fortaleciendo nuestros procesos de base en nuestra organización y nuestros países de origen. Um, ok, so in this physical space that we're at right now, uh, that's part of Iali Chimaleo, uh, we think it's really important for people to come to visit us and also for us to have a sequence of training processes. So right now, what's taking place is the second school of agroecological women, um, where people share and debate about their experiences from the places where co they're coming from. So we have really interesting experiences from food production and from organizing in Guatemala, experiences in the struggle of all the problems that are being faced in Mexico, also experiences from El Salvador, Honduras, and Panama. And these are lots of uh, very rich experiences that are also combined with the experiences in food production, as well as the political experiences here that we have at our school that we also want to continue to strengthen. Um, here we use the, the methodology of popular education, understanding that it's not like I know everything, but we, our knowledge is a process of construction. We share what we know, we enter in debate, um, and also we share the knowledge of those who visit us. So the idea is uh, to strengthen knowledge that we all have, as well as provide different tools to strengthen uh, the struggle and the different kinds of grassroots organizing that we are all doing. Wow, it's so powerful. <laughs> 
So there's a couple things that um, when I hear this that I'm thinking about. One is just um, let have let's have Carlos tell us just let's talk about food production, the food production skills that are being taught because they are ancestral food production techniques, not just the crops, but the actual techniques and and the use of the land, how that's all thought out and fully integrated. Okay. Um, si podrías explicar un poco sobre um, qué enseñan aquí sobre la producción de alimentos, eh, de promover prácticas ancestrales, cómo están eh, trabajando aquí con, con la tierra, con el suelo, ese tipo de manejo. Sí, primero mencionarles que estamos en Nicaragua, como ya lo dijo la compañera Terry, Nicaragua, un país con una cultura bastante productiva, una cultura eh, de, de, de campesinos y campesinas que trabajan la tierra. Eso hace que el nicaragüense sea soberano. Aquí el nicaragüense cultiva el 92% de su dieta básica. ¿verdad? Entonces no hay riesgo en el tema de la producción, al menos que vengan eh, fenómenos naturales como huracanes, sequía, etc. Entonces eso hace fácil traer compañeros o compañeras a conocer estos espacios, conocer Nicaragua, Nicaragua la, 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 Nicaragua, la, 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 la Nicaragua productiva, la Nicaragua solidaria. Acá en Eliala nosotros nos encontramos en una finca que hace ya cinco años fue muy maltratada con trabajo de, de ganadería. Broco, okay. So, um, first of all, like Terry said, uh, we're in Nicaragua, which is a country that has a whole culture of producing food and where peasants work the land. In fact, about 92% of what is uh, consumed by Nicaraguans in their diet is produced here. And there's not really a risk of going hungry, uh, except for in the case of uh, phenomena like hurricanes or droughts. So climate that, change issues. Mm -hmm. Climate change issues. So that makes it really easy to bring people uh, from other places to this uh, Nicaragua that's very productive and also in solidarity. So uh, this farm that we're on um, was a place where we started to work five years ago, and it was in really bad shape due to uh, the livestock and the ways in which livestock were raised here. Entonces nosotros a través de actividades culturales como es la la labranza mínima, ¿no? la incorporación de estiércol en el suelo, el, el movimiento de la tierra a través de, 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 de elaboración de surco, camellones, a veces también hacemos cama bien intensiva. De esa manera nosotros hemos, hemos ido creando condiciones para las plantas, porque nosotros nos basamos en, 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 el, en lo siguiente, nosotros no solamente queremos cosechar frutos, sino que también queremos cosechar suelo. Entonces, ese es nuestro objetivo, ir mejorando la tierra para que nuestros nuestro frutos sean aún de mayor calidad. Este suelo compacto, suelo vertisol, suelo especial, especialista o especialmente eh, bueno para, para, para gramíneas, en el caso del maíz, el pasto, el arroz, y nosotros hemos tratado de convertirlo en un espacio bastante cómodo eh, para, para hortalizas, para frutales, eh, diferentes cultivos, también como en el caso del frijol, Entonces, con actividades culturales, con conocimientos que aportan los compañeros que vienen de distintos lugares de Nicaragua, compañeras y compañeros que vienen de distintos lugares de la región, hemos ido recogiendo todos los, los, los digamos, los aspectos que ellos han valorado acerca de, de, del espacio y de esa manera nosotros, junto a esos conocimientos, hemos ido mejorando la estructura del suelo. Porque acá, como les decía, el suelo es pesado, cuando llueve el suelo se encharca Cuando hace un poco de sol, el suelo se endurece. Entonces nosotros hemos ido incorporando materia orgánica a través del estiércol, pero también hacemos el uso de abonos verdes para, el, 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 para proteger el suelo y no esté el suelo pelado y tenga problemas con la erosión hídrica, con la erosión eólica. Y de esa manera nosotros logramos eh, establecer una cama que pueda amortiguar todos esos, 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 esos problemas que tenemos durante el invierno y durante el verano. Okay. So, um, 
So we've incorporated a wide, a wide different range of practices here, including limiting tilling, uh, in, uh, integrating manure into the fields, and creating different kinds of beds, including biointensive beds. And this is all focused on the idea that the plants can grow better. We also talk about not just thinking about harvesting fruits, but also being able to harvest soil. Um, because if you have soil that is in better health, then you'll have fruits that are in better health. So here in this farm, we have a soil that is really, really compact, um, that uh, historically was used to grow different kinds of, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but if it's germinia, but basically corn, um, oh, grasses, and um, rice. Grains. But we also want, uh, this space to be adapted to be able to grow different kinds of vegetables, fruits, beans. And so the Nicaraguan students who are here as well as students that have come from the region have all contributed to different kinds of cultural practices that we can use on the soils. And these have all, thing, have, uh, these have all contributed to us improving the, the quality of the soil here. Like I said, the soil here is very heavy and when it rains, it basically turns into mud. When it dries, it dries up and basically kind of like a, like a cracked earth. And so we've been working really hard to um, apply more or build up more organic matter through um, the use of uh, manure, green manures, cover crops, um, also to be able to protect the soil so that it's not exposed and to prevent types, different types of erosions and mean that the soil can confront a wide range of uh, climates that it faces. So it's non-chemical farming, and you probably all picked up on that. <laughs> it's non-chemical farming. It's totally or organic. Two things that I learned today, on top of my visit last year, was um, and I was just thinking in terms of animal husbandry. This was just a wonderful thing when we were touring the different uh, plots or different segments for crops. There's a segment of land right now being uh that's going to be improved for growing uh grasses for livestock and that pl plot of soil is between is between i think we were seeing um uh, calabaza squash and beans and then there was this area that's going to be grass for the livestock and then next to that uh is the where all the banana trees are growing mm -hmm. where the grass is being grown and is and where the livestock is going to graze is under trees so that the livestock is in shape throughout the throughout the day and it's like how reasonable is that and how humane is that it was just like a natural like well of course you would do this and so that was just so wonderful to see and then the other thing that carlo shared with me and, and i think we talked about this last year as well is that the surrounding land not just the land that's actually being cultivated at this ayala is part of um, of husbandry of the land and part of, of keeping the finca itself in good health. And that means taking care of the plants and animals, birds, trees that surround the farm. And so it's very healthy, um, I don't know what, wilderness surrounding the farm in which birds feed, in which bees are uh, freely creating honey. There's, there's monkeys that live here that, you know, eat the bananas. And so it, it's co a completely integrated um, natural experience with the food production and a complete respect for the natural order of nature and humans being part of it, not in control of all of it. The integration is just, is just such a wonderful thing. And, and it, is an, it is ancestral practices, things that we have lost with mechanized and industrial and chemical farming. And it, it's a really, really, really beautiful project. Dice que, pues que quería compartir dos cosas que aprendió en el recorrido de hoy y también en su visita pasada. Eh, primero que este, nos enseñaste un área donde pues van a sembrar pasto para el ganado, pero de, al lado de esto, están sembrando hortalizas, este pipián, por ejemplo, que es la comida para lo, lo, las personas que están aquí. Y al otro lado está la musacia. Y en ese lugar donde está el pasto, está un lugar donde puede estar el ganado bajo sombra, que es algo tan lógico y tan humano para los animales que habitan en esta finca. 
Y la otra cosa es que eh, alrededor, en los alrededores de la finca, eh, una parte de... Eh, algo muy importante en ese sentido de cuidar la tierra, cuidar la naturaleza, es que hay un enfoque también en cuidar las plantas, los animales, los pájaros y todo lo que es lo que está en el bosque alrededor de la finca, donde pueden, bueno, los pájaros tienen que comer, las abejas pueden producir miel, vienen los monos a comer los bananos, entonces es un, es un sistema muy integral donde hay respeto para la naturaleza y se consigue el sistema donde eh, los seres humanos son parte de la nat naturaleza, son una parte y, y aquí se mira eh, muchas de las prácticas ancestrales que pues se ha perdido en muchos lugares con la introducción de una agricultura muy mecanizada, muy industrial, muy basado en, en químicos. Entonces, esas son las dos cosas que ella quería compartir. So, I wonder in the last few minutes that we have, um, we should talk about the international projects that have been introduced and completed since we all three were here April of, of 2021, because there's some really um, significant um, changes that have been allowed to happen here because of donations and projects envisioned by Carlos and, and other um, international solidarity groups. And again, one of the projects was this water tank that was um, was uh, the result of a donation from our friends in San Francisco, Porfirio and Marlene, um, who saw you know the need after the hurricanes in, in November of 2020. Um, so a huge shout out to them, but also to friends of the ATC and several other groups who have helped with the water tank, with the irrigation, and with the electricity. So let's talk about um, the international um, involvement in this project, okay. in, in this IALA. Okay. Um, entonces, en, la, en los últimos minutos que tenemos, sería importante hablar un poco de algunos proyectos internacionales que se han cumplido eh, o que se realizó en ese último año que te vivió muchos cambios nuevos y grandes gracias a diferentes donaciones, diferentes ideas trabajado aquí, también con el apoyo de diferentes grupos de solidaridad. Un resultado fue el tanque de un grupo de camaradas que vienen de San Francisco después de los huracanes, pero también está las gestiones que hace a mi persona, que sea otros grupos, con el riego, el tanque, el, eh, el sistema de luz. Entonces, si se podría comentar un poco de, de esos avances. Primero, eh, cuando Terry mencionaba la integración, la diversidad de, de, de cultivos que nosotros estamos implementando acá en el IALA, hay, hay un punto muy importante y es la integración animal en los sistemas de cultivo. ¿ya? Porque el, el, el capitalismo nos enseñó o, o, nos, o nos sigue diciendo que la vaca tiene que estar en un lugar sin árboles, eh, los cultivos tienen que estar en otro lado, las frutas en otro lado y las hortalizas en otro lado. Entonces, todo por separado. ¿ya? Entonces, a nosotros, nuestros ancestros o, o, o los ancestros no practicaban esa, esa, esa agricultura, ¿no? practicaban una agricultura más integral donde... En un espacio se podían tener mucha diversidad de especies eh, animal y también especies, este, en el caso de, 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 de hortalizas y, y cultivos, cultivos para, para el consumo humano. Entonces nosotros acá en el le estamos trabajando la integración animal en los sistemas de cultivo. Por eso queremos ver el sistema de las parcelas donde hay cultivos perecederos ganado y al otro lado la musacia acompañada del vivero donde se van a reproducir las plantas. Dice, dice la compañera Marlene Sánchez, digámosle a, la, a las personas que vienen acá que no es la, 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 la hortaliza por allá y el frijol por acá, es frijol y hortaliza donde, donde se pueda colocar. Tiene que haber diversidad. Y eso es muy importante para combatir los fenómenos naturales que, que, que nos acechan en, en algunas temporadas. 
tener diferentes cultivos en diferentes lugares nos permite que si el huracán afectó el frijol, bueno, tenemos por acá maíz o tenemos otro cultivo que nos pueda sustentar en ese momento donde tenemos pérdida por, por, a causa de los huracanes. Entonces, Erika. Uh -huh. Ok. Um, so, first of all, I wanted to say um, one thing in relation to what Terry was saying is that here on the farm, what we've been working on is integrating animals into crop systems and including a wide range of crops because capitalism tells us that we have to have our cows over here in one section without any trees, the fruit crops have to be in one area, the trees have to be in one specific area, and then we have to have our vegetable crops in another area. And our ancestors didn't practice agriculture that way. They had a lot of different things in one space, including the, the integration of animals and crops. So what we're doing here in Iala is, is exactly this, the integration of animals in, in, in with our crops. Um, so we have, you know, for example, our livestock with our different banana crops. We also have the nursery. And as our um, comrade Marlon Sanchez says, we can't just, here in Iala, what we have to do and what we have to tell others is that where there's space to grow something, we want to do you know, for if there's space to grow beans and, and vegetables together, we'll do that. We have to be able to grow in a diversified way. And that's really important when there's different, it's very, very important to have different kinds of crops because if any kinds of phenomena come to affect us, we'll be more resilient. So for example, if the hurricane comes and affects my beans in one area, I'll still have my corn in another area um, because I, I have a diversified farm. See you, Sí. La ayuda, la ayuda internacional, ¿ya? la solidaridad internacional es la ternura de, de nuestros pueblos, ¿no? Tener es, esa, esa ayuda de compañeros y compañeras de Estados Unidos, de Europa, gente que, que siente eh, todo ese trabajo que se vienen haciendo en nuestros países, en nuestras comunidades, da ese, ese oxígeno a esa, a esa ayuda que ustedes nos brindan para nuestro desarrollo a nivel local, a nivel, eh, a nivel de, de, de nuestro instituto. Y gracias a esas donaciones que ustedes han hecho, que de antemano le, le, doy, le, damos, le damos las gracias en nombre de este instituto, hemos podido lograr eh, resolver el problema que teníamos con el sistema eléctrico acá en el IALA. Ahora ya, eh, gracias a su donación, tenemos energía eléctrica en toda la, la infraestructura del, del IALA y eso ha hecho o ha logrado que mejore la distribución del sistema de agua, un bombeo automático que nos permite tener el tanque siempre lleno, nos lleva a tener resultados como mandar agua a los edificios, a los cultivos y un logro que, que hicimos hace poco fue lograr llevar el agua hacia el ganado, eso también lo vino a favorecer eh, el haber reparado el sistema eléctrico. Tenemos el tanque, como lo decía la compañera, un tanque nuevo que también fue a través de los fondos que se, que se recolectan con, su, con, su, con sus corazones, con sus ayudas para, para fortalecer la solidaridad. Eso también hemos logrado, eh, digamos, eh, ya superar ese problema de abastecimiento de agua. Y también todo el, todo el trabajo que, que hemos hecho nosotros ¿verdad? Para, para que esos recursos lleguen y se ejecuten de la manera que nosotros realmente les, les, les planteamos a ustedes no haciendo uso incorrecto, sino tratando de, de maximizar es, esos recursos que sabemos con todo el esfuerzo y con todo el corazón que ustedes nos mandan para acá, para el Instituto. So, um, now to talk about the international support, then in solidarity, as we say, the solidarity is the tenderness of our peoples, um, which comes a lot from uh, different comrades from the United States, from Europe, who really uh, care a lot about the work that's happening here that feel connected to the work and want to give support for the development um, that's taking place here at a local level at, at Ariala. So we want to say thank you on behalf of our whole institution for this kind of support. Thanks to these donations, we've been able to um, do work on our electrical system uh, so that there's now uh, high quality electricity distributed throughout, um, throughout the farm, which is also helped us improve our system for distributing water because we now have a um, automatic pump to take water out of the well into the tank and distribute the water to our different buildings here, our different crops, as well as to our livestock, um, which is a new 
uh, a new game here more recently. Um, also, uh, as Terry mentioned, uh, thanks to your support, we also have a new water tank, which um, we know these funds were raised with, um, you know, from, from the bottom of your hearts, lots of work, um, which has helped us overcome a lot of challenges that we had with storing up water. Um, so uh, we also want everyone to know that the, these kinds of donations, resources arrive and are, are uh, executed using, uh, uh, being as efficient as possible, using the, the resources as we, as we uh, explain to everyone. In I our, know the funds have been, you know, really very well thought out how they're invested here. I mean, it's, it's I guess for, for me, I will say, and, and you know, this has so much to do with Carlos and Erica, it's, it's an extreme honor and it's a very rare opportunity where you organize a delegation with someone as wonderful as Erica and and we had 12 with us, I think, 12 mm -hmm. or 13 with us, um, March of, of last year, and to study things and to have, you know, donations come out of just watching our daily posts on Facebook, to have, to have a delegation of people inspire the public to that extent is a, is a really unique and very uh, profound experience for all of us. And now to have the opportunity you know, to come back and actually see the fruits of all the labor from that particular delegation to the people who traveled with us on that delegation to Carlos and all the people who work with him at the Iyala. It's a really, um, it's a pretty unique and a very profound um, ex experience to, to have had. And I just feel so fortunate to, you know, to be able to work with you, Erica, and to have met Carlos, who knows, you know, I love Venezuela, so. <laughs> and now Nicaragua, too. So, so um, is there anything that you want to say before we before we close our episode? Um, maybe, Terry, if I could, just say um, for, you know, our friends watching, uh, watching this program and listening to the program, um, that uh, we invite people to come to Nicaragua. And in fact, later this year, in June of this year, we're going to be hosting through Friends of ATC an agricultural brigade in which uh, people from all walks of life can come and see their own eyes, uh, with their own eyes, what Iala is like, participate in the work here, go out and work in the fields, maybe maybe uh, milk some cows. <laughs> and so uh, the information that we have, uh, maybe Terry can post it, I'll put it in, in the information. Uh, on, yeah, on this episode, as well as you can visit friendsatc.org. And, and where can uh, where can our audience make donations? Also on friends. I'll ask that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe Terry can can help us put a link on on, yeah, on we the can, website. Mm -hmm. um, or sorry, on on the YouTube. But uh, friendsatc.org is also another place where you can directly make donations. Great. Right. And Carlos, any what what would you like to say before we? Un comentario final. <risa> bueno, mi comentario final es que sigamos siendo amigos de estos pueblos que luchan, de estos pueblos que hoy en día defienden su, su, su cultura, su cultura productiva, su cultura ancestral, de estos pueblos que hoy en día también defienden sus propios procesos, sus procesos revolucionarios, los procesos de formación política, de formación agroecológica, y decirles a ustedes que en Nicaragua, Venezuela y Cuba, y en el resto de países de América Latina, esperamos que ustedes nos visiten y nosotros recibirlos con todo el cariño y todo el amor que tenemos como, como pueblos. Y gracias a ustedes por esa solidaridad internacional que tienen con estos pueblos que, que valga la redundancia, que luchan contra, un, contra ese enemigo común. Pero que nosotros, a través de nuestra formación y a través de la, de la, de la, de la, de la cultura, que tenemos de, de, de trabajar la tierra, vamos y seguiremos defendiendo estos procesos de lucha. Un saludo y estamos en entera comunicación. So, um, thank you so much for continuing to be in solidarity, uh, our friends, with um, in solidarity with uh, peoples in struggle, with peoples who have their culture of producing food that are carrying out their own processes, their own revolutionary processes, that are also leading different processes in political training and agroecological training. Um, 
on behalf of the peoples of Nicaragua, Venezuela, Cuba. Um, we hope that you will visit us. Uh, we'll receive you with lots of care and lots of love. And again, thanks for the international solidarity uh, that in this common struggle, uh, a common struggle against a common enemy, uh, through training and through the culture of working the land, uh, we can defend our own processes and greetings. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just want to remind our audience that you've been watching What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program. We broadcast typically every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Today you've been watching a special broadcast from Nicaragua. Um, also, you can catch uh, our program on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And don't forget to listen to Code Pink Radio, which broadcasts every Thursday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern on WBAI New York City and WPFW Washington, D.C. Code Pink Radio is also available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So thank you, everyone, and be sure to watch us next week. And thank you to Carlos and Erica for a very special conversation. Adios.